welcome back. Today we're going to be making a diorama card. It fits inside a standard envelope, but when it comes out, it pops up. Lots of lovely dimension. This card was actually inspired by Jennifer Maguire. In her video, she used a set of dies. While the dies were quite fancy in that they cut an oval shape here in the background. I was able to recreate this just using my trimmer. Let me show you the back of the card. So as you can see, there's space to write your name and a short greeting. While I was very happy with this card, it really is my prototype. And you'll see in today's version that I make a, a few changes by adding some additional pattern paper on the sides here. So let's clear this away and make a start. I have all my bits and pieces here. Today we will be using stamps from the Evergreen Elegance stamp set and the Border Punch that is part of the bundle. This bundle is available in the annual catalogue and I actually bought the stamp set because I love this garland and I thought this was a beautiful sentiment. So let's clear this away and I'll talk you through the pieces that we're going to need when creating our card. I've already stamped what will be the back panel of the card, it's the envelope. We have one piece here that is seven inches wide by four and an eighth deep. This piece is scored at one and a quarter in from each side. Second piece of cardstock is five and a half inches wide by one and a half inches tall, and it is scored at half an inch. On either side and the last piece of cardstock is also five and a half inches wide but only one inch tall and again it is scored at uh, half an inch on either side. I also have some pieces that I've uh, punched out with the border punch and a piece of whisper white for the greeting. Then we have a piece of DSP for the back, matching DSP for either side here. And that's the addition that I've made for this version. And then these are the pieces that go on the outside. I have sponged all the edges of my cardstock, sorry, of my pattern paper, except for this one. Um, I've talked to you before about how I often sponge the edges of my paper. Uh, that's usually to give it some texture and to also hide the white core that you sometimes get when you slice up a piece of DSP. So I'll pop some of these to the side and we'll get our stamping done first. Let's start with the greeting. I've used real red for this. This Merry Christmas is also from the Evergreen Elegance stamp set. I will be using this die to cut this greeting out. So I'll be back in a moment. So the greeting is cut out, ready to go, and I can pop that to the side. Die comes from the seasonal label set of dies, which is part of the painted season uh, mega suite in the mini catalog. Now to stamp our Christmas trees. I think I will line these up and actually try and stamp across the panels to give it a more continuous look. So I'm starting with evergreen evening evergreen. <laughs> Too many evergreens going on here at the moment. And the larger of the stamps, 
I'm not really even going to look at the other one. I'm just going to stamp away. So there's the first of them. might see if I can get one going off the edge over here I think and perhaps one on this side Now the smaller tree or the shorter tree I'm going to stamp in soft succulent. Line these back up again. One going around the corner. Might even put a shadow with a second generation stamping there. Oh, let's try again. The second generation didn't seem to work very well. Perhaps because it's a lighter shade of green. And we'll put one over here as well. Okay. I think that looks quite pretty. And for our very last piece of stamping, I'm going to need the Evening Evergreen again and this gorgeous garland stamp. I'm actually going to turn it upside down. Beautiful. So as you can see, puts a lovely garland across the top. Could put the garland on the top and the bottom, but I just wanted to leave enough room to write here. Uh, a name could go at the top and then your signature, a short greeting and your signature could go here at the bottom. Start putting the card together now. So this is our base. I'm going to fold these side pieces in and burnish. And on the back, I'll add my sentiment panel that's why I like the liquid glue get a little bit of wiggle room then we'll put our pieces on the side panels 
lining them up. With our sentiment panel. I like the way the garland sort of looked like or mimicked the pattern in this DSP. So that's the back of the card finished. Let's put in our stamped DSP. My glue must be running out a little bit. And last piece. When we put that up like that, oh, I, th I really like the way that goes around the corners. I think that adds so much more to the card. Now to work on our bridge pieces. We're going to fold in our little tabs and burnish those. This diorama card <laughs> reminds me of when I was a child and I used to use shoe boxes and cereal, old cereal boxes to create dioramas. I can remember creating an underwater scene once. So just to add, a, oops. A little bit of glue along the bottom of our trees. We don't want it being able to be seen and only needs to be a little bit because this liquid glue is very strong. Just put that on and move it up so that you can't see the cardstock through the bottom. The same with the Evening evergreen piece. Might turn that that way, yes. Onto our second connector. Now that these are dry and trimmed, we need to take our snips and just Snip a little wedge off each corner or each tab. Now with the tabs all trimmed out, we're ready to start. So the idea is to line it up across the bottom. This is the, the deeper of the two tags and to put it into the crease. We line it up there, put a little bit of liquid glue. Now, be mindful that you don't want this squishing out everywhere, so don't put too much. And then fold the side panel in. And while you've got a bit of time, make sure it's exactly where you want it to be, in line with the bottom nice and straight. Just hold it for a minute to make sure that it's started to stick. When you open it, you will see that you've got your panel in place. Okay, 
For the second one, this time we're going to fold the panel behind, put a little bit of glue on it, and without getting glue everywhere, we're going to line that up with the corner of our card. So it's going to line up along the side edge and along the bottom. You can push it over this way to make sure that it's lined up and that it's in line with the bottom. And then just hold it for a moment until it's started to form a firm grip. Okay. Now, open that panel. Make sure the bottoms are aligned. And this time we're going to add glue on both tabs. And holding that nice and firmly, we're going to fold in the other side. Hold it for just a second. And then we're going to just go back and forward just to make sure that it closes both ways. Make sure that you're lined up at the bottom. Give a little tap. And there we have our diorama. Time to bring back in my greeting. And I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. Now, as you can see, I've run out of dimensionals, but don't throw these bits away. They work just as well. And I'm going to use these on the back of my label. So I'll just attach these strips to the back of my label. Perfect size for this. Okay. Now to attach this, just fold your card flat and look to get a nice even edge on either side and along the bottom. I'm going to add two of these gilded gems into the little rounded ends of the label. They fit in there perfectly. This is the medium size gilded gem. They do come in a pack like this, so they have large, medium, and small. So these are two of the medium-sized ones. So that's looking pretty good. And the last little embellishment are some little stars. I'm going to add some small dimensionals to the two medium-sized stars. This star comes from the Give It A Whirl set of dies, and it is actually um, a trio of stars in the one die cut, uh, a small, a medium and a large. So this is the medium. I'll put that one on that tall tree there, up on dimensional. This other medium. One also up on a dimensional and I think I might pop it on this one here. And then the other three little stars, I'll just pop a bit of glue top of this tree 
doesn't need to be much because they're only tiny stars. Put that on the top of that star. And a bit of glue on the top of these two. And add these last little stars. Just make sure that it doesn't go into the corner because you don't want it stopping the card from opening and closing. Whoops, it doesn't want to stay. It wants to stick on my finger and not on the card. Ah, perfect. Now we all like a little bit of bling, so I'm going to bring in my Wink of Stella and just give each of those stars a little bit of a paint to make them shine a little bit. If you don't have a Wink of Stella, you need one. You can see that in the sun but there is a little bit of sparkle there on each of those stars. And that's the finished card. Let's have a look at it in comparison to the original. It's quite similar. Although I must say I really do like um, the card going round the corner or the DSP going round the corner. I think that looks much better. Now I'm also going to show you a sneak peek. So that's that one. A sneak peek of one that I made for this week's Heart of Christmas blog hop. This is a scene from inside, looking out with the Christmas tree and all the presents underneath the tree. And on the back, just has a little tree and the greeting. I did stamp the envelope with the smaller of the two trees in soft succulent, just as a nice finishing touch. So there's the card we made today. And here's another example of how you can use the same mechanism, but create your very own card using different products. Well, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.